In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Brothers and sisters, we come together to celebrate this Holy Eucharist. Today, we celebrate the solemnity of the Ascension. And as we celebrate this Holy Eucharist, we pray for people who need our prayers. We pray that our leaders will find some best solutions to this uh, crisis. We pray for those who have died, that they may receive the gift of eternal life. Those who are sick, that they become, uh, or they will be healed. And as we celebrate this Holy Eucharist, we now ask the Lord to grant us the gift of forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you have revealed yourself as the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You have poured out your, on your people the spirit of truth. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are the good shepherd leading us to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth is the people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Gladden us with holy joys, Almighty God and make us rejoice with devout thanksgiving, for the ascension of Christ your Son is our exaltation. And where the head has gone before in glory, the body is called to follow in hope. Through our Lord Jesus Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and now. First reading, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In my earlier work, Theophilus, I dealt with everything Jesus had done and taught from the beginning until the day he gave his instructions to the apostles he had chosen through the Holy Spirit and was taken up to heaven. He had shown himself alive to them after his passion by many demonstrations. For 40 days, he continued to appear to them and tell them about the kingdom of God. When he had been at table with them, he had told them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for what the Father had promised. It is, he had said, what you have heard me speak about. John baptized with water, but you, not many days from now, will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now having met together, they asked him, Lord, has the time come? Are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know times or dates that the Father has decided by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes to you and then you will be my witnesses, not only in Jerusalem, but throughout Judea and Samaria, and indeed to the ends of the earth. As he had said this, he was lifted up while they looked on, and a cloud took him from their sight. They were still staring into the sky when suddenly two men in white were standing near them, and they said, why 
are you men from Galilee standing here looking into the sky? Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, this same Jesus will come back in the same way as you have seen him go there. The word of the Lord. Our response to the psalm. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. All peoples clap your hands, cry to God with shouts of joy. For the Lord, the most high we must fear, great king over all the earth. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. God goes up with shouts of joy. The Lord goes up with trumpet blast. Sing praise for God, sing praise. Sing praise to our King, sing praise. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. God is King of all the earth. Sing praise with all your skill. God is King over the nations. God reigns on his holy throne. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. Second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. May the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and perception of what is revealed to bring you to full knowledge of him. May he enlighten the eyes of your mind so that you can see what hope his call holds for you, what rich glories he has promised the saints will inherit, and how infinitely great is the power that he has exercised for us believers. This you can tell from the strength of his power at work in Christ when he used it to raise him from the dead and to make him sit at his right hand in heaven far above every sovereignty, authority, power, or domination, or any other name that can be named not only in this, in this age, but also in the age to come. He has put all things under his feet and made him as the ruler of everything, the head of the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills the whole creation. The word of the Lord. Gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. Go and teach all people my gospel. I am with you always until the end of the world. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. The eleven disciples set out for Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had arranged to meet them. When they saw him, they fell down before him, though some hesitated. Jesus came up and spoke to them. He said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, make disciples of all the nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teach them to observe all the commands I gave you. And know that I am with you always, yes, to the end of time. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes our language or the words we use are tricky, like uh, words that give direction. Like when we say, come, we usually understand this as uh, 
from one point to the other. Go from one point to the other. That's how we understand words. And uh, well, uh, and come again, meaning going away and coming back. And so this has also a, a kind of implications in our understanding of what it means to ascend and to descend. And today we celebrate the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have heard, as I said, the first reading was taken up. And uh, uh, you were looking upwards. And uh, well, uh, and it's, it says also that he's now sitting at the right hand of the Father. And of course, it's tricky because we do not take that literally. What actually it means is that he is in intimate relationship with the Father, the Godhead, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So that even the notion that he abandoned us or even entrusted fully the ministry to us sometimes uh, uh, is implied when it says that he went up or taken up to heaven and he will come again. Second coming. I would like to start this short conversation by saying the mystery of ascension is a mystery of presence, not absence or abandonment. He did not abandon us when he went up or taken up. It is mysterious. Jesus went away physically, but more present spiritually or in a glorious manner. It is a transition from the mystery of incarnation, physical presence, to a glorified presence. While physical presence is so real and tangible, but limited in time and space, the glorified presence after resurrection is real, may not be tangible, but transcends the limit of time and space. His presence is not any more limited in time and space, like walking around the Holy Land, the Middle East, as when he was incarnated, but now present simultaneously at all times in all places, walking with all Christians everywhere. That's what we call the omnipresence. The mystery of transfiguration gave us a glimpse of the glorified Christ, or resurrected Christ, and manifested in that event the bridging of time and space when Jesus was talking to Moses and Elijah who have long lived past. Also some initial manifestations were already observed after the resurrection when Jesus overcame the limit of the wall or the door he entered in the room even when the doors were locked. And also some instances of appearing and disappearing coming and going in a way. So Jesus' presence from then on is unlimited. He is present here, there, and everywhere. At present, he is present in the Philippines, he is in the US, he is in Africa. We have no monopoly of his presence here. When we celebrate Mass, he is present. He is in our homes. He is where two or three are gathered to pray. He is present and is dwelling in every baptized person. We cannot limit his presence only inside a church or only when we celebrate Mass. The mystery of ascension makes Jesus more present, closer to each one of us whenever we go, wherever we are, maybe at home at work or in church. The disciples at that time have degree of understanding of what happened, the ascension. So they were so that they knew that he is not going away and abandoned them. Unlike during the death of Jesus, the disciples were terrified. They went hiding. Two disciples went away to Emmaus, towards Emmaus. But after the ascension, it was said. They went back home full of joy and praising God. You see that in the Gospel of Luke 24, 50. 
It is because by ascending, he is not going away from them. Instead, he is fulfilling his promise to them, as we have heard from the Gospel of Matthew, the reading today. I will be with you till the end of time. So he is not abandoning us. He is with us. That is in Gospel of Matthew 28, 20. Also in Mark 16, 19, it says that they afterwards went in different directions preaching the good news. And they equally are confident that Jesus is with each and with all of them. And in quotation, working with them, confirmed their message by the miracles which accompanied them. And go. So that invoking his name in healing, like we hear the story, the Acts of the Apostles, they are confident that Jesus is present with them, accompanying them in their mission. So, going up or take, being taken up is actually transition to that presence, to a better, closer presence, so that he can be with each and every one. In relation to his second coming, well, Jesus will come again, as we proclaim also our uh, uh, article of faith, not from far away in coming back here, or not to come back as it happened more than 2,000 years ago, but he will come again in a glorious manner and appear with full manifestation of his glory and as the judge. In other words, he has been present all the time in our life, wherever we go, wherever we pray, wherever we are. He has not abandoned us. And from that time, and from time to time, he comes to us through the sacraments, and he comes physically in the form of bread and wine, whenever we celebrate the Eucharist. But the second coming is not as the first one, is coming in glory and as a judge. In relation to our destiny, that is, with Christ's presence in our life, we experience heaven on earth. Experience of presence of Christ is always heaven on earth. And this, uh, our destiny is to be with him forever. So in as much as we believe, we follow, we imitate Jesus, we to hope to be victorious, and so share in his glory but also reminding us rough times like the cross as part of the journey. To share in Christ's resurrection is to have a glorified existence, which is the same but different from our present life. The mystery of resurrection and ascension makes sense amidst the tragedy of death. Death is not going back to non-existence, but is going towards the existence with the risen Christ. That's why we say to those who died, rest in peace. Also to the martyrs and faithful, we say, receive the rewards of eternal life, for their death is birth to eternal life. That's why we celebrate the feast of saints on their birth to eternal life. And to conclude, we rejoice for this feast of ascension. Because this feast reminds us of the assurances and evidences of Jesus' presence and has been experienced everywhere by believers, including us, where sacraments are celebrated, where Christians are present. We pray as we continue to celebrate this Mass that we too may transcend our human limitations in our life's journey, may lead us to our destiny. That is to share in the goodness, divinity, and the glory of Christ. Amen. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in their Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Jesus in glory intercedes for us at the right hand of the Father. With confidence we bring our prayers to God our Father. For the Pope and the bishops, may they lead in service and love for the good of the Church. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in government, may they always be concerned with the needs of those who are the poorest and weakest in society. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For the spread of the gospel, may we each be strengthened to show our love of God and neighbor as missionary disciples of the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For families, may those families experiencing struggle and crisis be given a spirit of wisdom and perception to help them in their need. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may we entrust in the promise of the glory which the saints will inherit and the compassionate mercy of God who desires them to come to heaven. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, hear the prayers of your Son, Jesus Christ, who now sits at your right hand in heaven and brings to you all our petitions and needs. May we be open to the powerful guidance of your, of your Holy Spirit in these coming days. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for us through your goodness we have received this bread to offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for us through your goodness we have received this wine to offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer a sacrifice now in supplication, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise up to the heavenly realms, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Up the Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended to the highest heavens as the angels gaze in wonder. Mediator between God and man, judge of the world and Lord of hosts, he ascended not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son of the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son of the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall 
so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of God. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking with the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Vincent our Bishop, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Andrew and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold he who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you enter under my roof, I will say the word of my soul.
prayer of communion to those at home. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I always desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritual into my heart. I embrace you always and unite myself wholly to you. May I never be separated from you. Amen. some notices. Uh, we ask that you read the bulletin which can be obtained from the parish web page or parish office for the following announcements. The procedure for attending weekday and weekend masses. Daily masses are still live streamed and parishioners are encouraged to participate from home. And at the feast day of Our Lady Help of Christian, please read the prayer in the bulletin. Uh, St. Vincent de Paul are in urgent need of blankets and non-perishable food items. If you would like to donate, please drop them off at the parish office. School enrollments for St. Andrew Primary School and the High School are now being taken. And if you would like to cop a copy of the bulletin emailed to, emailed to you, please contact the parish office with your email address or details. Please read the article on a word of encouragement from the Australian bishops of Australia. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who allowed those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant we pray that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united, united with you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we have celebrated the Holy Eucharist. We go now in peace. Thank you.